Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be checking up on this plant which we fed fish flakes and liquid fertilizers to see which of those two actually help the plants grow better. So stick around. So about a week ago, we actually fed our Drosera rotundifolia fish flakes and liquid fertilizers. And the reason why we did this was so that we could compare how these fish flakes and fertilizers obviously affect the plants which are receiving those nutrients. If you don't know what a Drosera is, this is a Drosera, but it is essentially a carnivorous plant. It's also called a sundew and it catches insects and different bugs, but you can also supplement its growth with some very diluted fertilizers and also obviously fish flakes or in other cases bloodworms or other small insects that you can get from the shops. So as I've said, we fertilize two different plants and we want to see how those fertilizers actually affect the growth of the plant. And the reason why we chose these Drosera is simply because they are the biggest ones we have right now. Out of all of our Drosera that we have, besides the tuberous Drosera, which are doing their own thing, these are the biggest plants that we have and obviously the only ones that we could probably feed and kind of quantify their growth because all the other guys are literally seedlings and even with the microscope, the microscope, the, with the magnifying glass, you guys are not going to be able to see the seedlings up close because they are literally just that tiny. Even with my own naked eyes, I can barely see them. They're just little specks of red and green and some of them are kind of yellow. So you can barely see them. So that's not really worthwhile. But with these bigger plants, we'll be able to see some of their growth. In today's video, we will also be talking about our Drosera Adelaide, which as you know, has gone through a lot. They were eaten by a cat, they were then transported around the whole world. Then we planted them up and they got fungus gnats in them. So we will be checking up on them, we will fertilize them, and we will give them their last application of neem oil to make sure that there are absolutely no more fungus gnats in their pots. And we will also be doing an update on our Drostera Regi, because our Drostera Regi needs to have liquid fertilizers. So we will be checking up on them and fertilizing them as well. So first off, I'll show you guys the Drostera Regi. You guys may remember we have two seedlings. Here is one and there is the other one. I'm not gonna get out the magnifying glass because their growth is literally exactly the same as last week. There's literally no difference in them, except for this guy here. It just has a little tiny bud forming where a new growth, uh, where a new leaf will start coming out of. So there's no reason for me to get the magnifying glass because I'll just be showing you guys the exact same thing as last week. There's literally nothing different with these guys. We will fertilize these guys a little bit later when we fertilize the other plants as well. So yeah, as you can see, they are completely the same, completely normal. Next up, we have the Drosera Adelaide. And I hope that you guys can actually see it now. It's grown so much since we first started looking after these guys. This is probably like a month worth of growth right here from it looking like this guy down here. So yeah, it has grown quite a bit. And as I said, we will be spraying this one with some of the neem oil just to make sure that we kill off any type of fungus gnats that may be remaining. Let's just do that real quick. Okay guys, and that is all of the the neem oil that we have made together. All finished now, so that's the last application of neem that we will have for this guy. So let me wash my hands real quick. Okay, cool, this guy is doing perfectly fine now and we will feed it together. I just wanna give it some time to let the, the neem oil soak in and we can update you guys on our Drosera rotundifolia. But before I update you guys on the rotundifolia, I actually wanna ask you guys a question. If you remember, a couple days ago, we made our pot for our Drosophyllum lucitanica, which we are getting 10 seeds of in the mail because we actually won them. And my question to you guys is this, should we actually use a terracotta pot or not? The reason why I'm asking you guys this is because I put rocks at the bottom of that pot and there is still sand leaking through. I also had one of our subscribers recommend that I use pot fabric and I actually messaged some people asking what they think about this and they said, it isn't really a good idea, it's better to use shade cloth. But the issue with shade cloth is that you have to buy them like in meters at a time and it gets quite expensive if you literally want like a couple centimeters. So it's kind of, you know, useless to do that. 
So I want to know what you guys think. Do you guys think I should go ahead and just get the terracotta pot and then use that anyway, even though I don't like the terracotta pots? Or do you guys think that I should keep the plastic pots and see how it goes with that, even though the soil falls out? Or do you think I should just put some sphagnum moss at the bottom of the plastic pots to try to keep it in, even though the sphagnum moss may keep in extra water? Please let me know what you guys think because I, you know, I don't really know what to do. Obviously, I want the plants to do well. But I obviously, as I said, I don't like the terracotta pots either. But if you guys think that I should get the terracotta pot, let me know and then I'll obviously I'll do that. So let's go back to looking at the Drosera rotundifolia. And here we go guys, here is our pot of Drosera rotundifolia. This is the one that we fed with fish flakes. You can see the fish flakes there are still inside the traps. And this is the one which we fed liquid fertilizer. And you can tell that we fed it liquid fertilizer because there's nothing on the traps. Obviously, it ate all the liquid fertilizers. So the very first thing that you guys may be able to tell between the two plants is that there is no difference. They look almost exactly the same as each other. They have the same size. There's literally no difference in them. And the reason why I suggest this is, is because it's only been a week, right? We fed this guy the fish flakes and this one the liquid fertilizers, but they both made a new leaf right there and, there and they both have new growth coming out of the center and they literally look about the same size. So what does this mean? Does this mean that the liquid fertilizer is better? Does it mean that the fish flakes are better? And it means that neither one of them are really better. We haven't given it enough time to actually determine which one is better. I was really hoping that the new developing trap would be a little bit bigger than one of the others seeing as we did fertilize them so we could have some kind of comparable results. But as you can tell, obviously not. So what we will do is that we will feed this guy just one more drop of liquid fertilizer and the same thing with this guy, but obviously with fish flakes. And then we can compare again next week to see any new differences. But what I do want to say is this. I think that this guy may actually grow bigger, quicker. And this guy over here will stay the same size, but it will just grow slower even though it is also obviously getting fertilizer, this guy will grow much bigger than, you know, one of these small guys here. And the reason why I believe this to be true is because this plant is obviously being, being fed the liquid fertilizers and this one being fed fish flakes. This means that the fertilizers for this guy is much more readily available compared to this guy over here. And the reason for this is kind of simple. If I had to have a protein shake over here, or if I had to have an apple, which one would my body be able to actually digest and put into my body quicker? Now the answer to this is something that not many people actually know. If you're having a protein shake or if you are a drosera and you're having a liquid fertilizer, all of the nutrients are very easily available. They are literally in suspension in the water, which means that they're literally floating in the water. And as you drink it or consume it, it literally goes right down into your body. Your body doesn't have to break it down with your teeth chewing on it. Your body doesn't have to then digest down all of the proteins and all of the carbohydrates into smaller pieces to digest it. Protein shakes, just like liquid fertilizers, are much more broken down and easily accessible for your body to actually consume. And in this case, much easily accessible for the plant to consume. But if you're having the fish flakes, or in this case, the apple, your body has to chew it, swallow it, and then your body still has to break down all of the apple pieces into smaller pieces and then absorb it. So obviously they are both good for you, but this is the reason why many people say that you should have a protein shake after exercising because a protein shake will give you the supplements and energy you need immediately. Whereas something like a big steak might take a little bit longer. And it's the same thing with the fertilizers. If you give the plant a liquid fertilizer, it will very easily and quickly absorb it into the body. But if you give it something like the fish flakes, it will stay there for much longer. And it's actually very apparent as you saw. The one that had the liquid fertilizers had the traps still open, whereas the drosera who have the fish flakes still have the traps slightly closed on the fish flakes and obviously the remaining pieces of the fish flakes are still there. And this is just a quick example that something like fertilizer or protein shakes can get absorbed much quicker and easier, but if you give your body or a drosera actual food, it will take a little bit longer. And that's why I suggest that the drosera which got the liquid fertilizer will grow big but quicker than the drosera who got the actual fish flakes because that one will also grow big, but slower. I need to tell you guys something. Australian apples are really good. They're much better than South African ones. And the other thing is that they last really long. I've had my apples in the fridge for like two months now. 
because obviously I was having them every day because I was exercising every day gym. But obviously the way that things are right now, everything shut down. And they've been in the fridge for so long, but they're still so good. And I think this, I think they might have a wax on them, but obviously I'll wash it off before I eat it. But they last so long and they're really good. So well done Australia. So as you can see, this is the trap that got the fertilizer and there's nothing left behind. The traps are completely open again. Whereas if you look at this guy here, he got the fish flakes. You can see there's some pieces of fish flakes still remaining and the traps are only open a slight little bit. I'm sure that this guy obviously has to digest this food and takes longer to do than this guy over here. Anyway, while I finish this apple, I will also fertilize these plants and we'll keep it on a time lapse so we can see what they do. Okay, and here we go guys. We will first fertilize our Drosera regi. You might actually be able to see the new growth coming out there. If I zoom in enough, you guys will see a little green spot. But I am gonna give this Drosera regi a good soil soak so we can really make sure the roots get enough nutrients because I'm kind of worried about these guys and they're growing quite slowly, so. Okay, that's pretty good. And let's do the other regi. Hopefully you guys can actually see it on camera. If you remember that in the last episode, it so, looks so bad. It has a like, gray stuff all over it. Yeah, sorry guys, this is the best I can do, but it's right over here. Okay, and that's a pretty good soil soak for them. And now let's do the Adelaide. Okay, so here is our tiny little baby Adelaide. And you guys should be able to see it because it's actually visible now. And let's give it just a couple drops. We don't want to do too much. Don't do too much because it is an Adelaide, it's not a Regi. It is more sensitive to root and leaf burns from fertilizers. And next we will do the actual visible plants because, you know, the other's tiny. But let's give this guy some fish flakes. Okay, so it has its fish flake. And I'll give you guys a 10, 10 minute time lapse, which is basically 30 seconds for you guys. See if it moves at all. As usual, I doubt it will move much or anything at all because it is just a baby. And there's no movement from the fish flake. So I'll see you guys in a couple seconds. Okay, and there you go guys. As you can see, that not much actually happened because as I've said, it's still young and I still need something to actually move and stimulate the leaves. So what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna feed two traps. We're gonna feed the newest trap and one that looks the best. So we will start off with our fir liquid fertilizer and I'll make sure you guys can see this properly. I'm gonna get my hand in the way again. And let's put one drop on this old leaf here. And on the newest leaf. There you go. And now let's put some fish flakes. I'm gonna try and make sure that these fish flakes are pretty big because obviously the droplets that we're giving are also pretty big. So yeah, I'm gonna try and make sure that their fish flakes are also big. And there we go guys, we have these plants now obviously all fertilized up. And what I will do is that I will leave this plant over here, actually like this is actually fine. I will leave the plant like this so we can also time lapse them to see if there is any movement. Which again, I do doubt, but you know, might as well try. So I'll see you guys in another 10 minutes. There we go, the plants are all, you know, fed now. I didn't see much movement. I think maybe this guy moved a little bit, but yeah, I'm not really certain because you can't really tell in if he's just standing around it. So yeah, that's how they look right now. So there we go, guys. That is it for today's Wednesday update. What I might end up doing is that I might actually feed the Drostra Regi twice a week now because 
they are not really growing that quick and I don't want them to die and obviously they need to be fertilized while they're young. So I might end up doing that. And please guys, if you have any idea what you think I should do with the Drosophyllum pot outside, please let me know in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. Hopefully we can get something that is good for the plants. I don't really want to have their soil leaking out because I hate that more than what I would hate having a terracotta pot. So let me know what you guys suggest I do, what you guys think I do. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this feeding video. Hopefully next week we can see some good updates on them. So if you aren't subscribed yet, remember to click the subscribe button so that you can actually stay up to date with all of the videos that we release every single week. And if you enjoyed this video, find it a little bit informative, please remember to leave a like. It really helps out the channel a lot. So thank you guys, I'll see you in the next episode.